Hi guys, my name is Christian Heckman, and for my presentation, I will be talking about an article from the New York Times that was published last month about a very innovative summer camp that's happening in the Hoopa Valley um, Reservation in Northern California, where they're teaching young children the Hoopa language. So I'll start by giving a very brief summary of the article itself. So this past July, 20 children who all belong to the Hoopa Valley tribe attended a summer camp at the Hoopa Valley Indian Reservation in Northern California. Uh, there was a very specific goal of the camp itself, and that was to create new learners of the Hoopa language. Um, unfortunately, only 20 individuals currently speak the language, which definitely puts it at a really great risk of extinction, which I'm going to talk about how that relates to our course objectives and standards when it comes to language extinction and language death. Um, the Hoopa have been around for thousands of years in that Northern California area, and white settlers during the gold rush of the 1800s um, came in and um, participated in something called forced assimilation. Um, and that included boarding schools where students were literally hauled off to um, boarding schools and um, would be very harshly punished for speaking their native tongue and their um, varied dialect that was obviously not um, what we consider a standard dialect. And like um, they even had an interview with one of the speakers who said he's every time he speaks his Hoopa language, he still has flashbacks to having his mouth washed out with soap. So this is a very big issue that they're in 2019, we're still trying to write after decades and decades of um, mistreatment and um, vigorous ethnocentrism at the hands of our government. So as I referenced in the last slide, um, students were taken to a boarding schools across the country and would be punished if they spoke in their Hoopa language and were also forced to assimilate in other ways as being as in being banned from wearing their traditional clothes. They even had their Native American names taken from them and given and given white traditional American sounding English names. And the goal of programs like this is to undo the damage of decades of linguistic and cultural oppression as I mentioned in the earlier point. And this particular camp was started in 2017 um, by a member of the Hoopa Valley tribe who actually grew up on the reservation, um, went to college and then upon graduating college, wanted to really try to make a vigorous effort to try to revive the language that they hold so dear to their culture. So first, it's probably helpful to find out how does a language even go extinct in the first place? So as we learned in our class readings and our lectures, a language can become extinct in three different ways. So the first way is all of its speakers die. Um, that's one way. The second way is all of its speakers stop speaking the language for one reason or another. And the third reason is uh, gradually over time, as we've seen in the Hoopa Valley language, uh, less and less people speak the language. And that's why it is so important for the Hoopa language to be taught to children to keep the language alive and preserved for the future generations to come. Um, the goal obviously is for them, those children currently at the summer camp to be able to take the language that they're hopefully gonna learn and pass it on to their kids and then their kids pass it on to their kids so it can be revived for generations and generations to come. And a quote from our textbook was really, um, I thought pretty nice. It said, I am always sorry when any language is lost because languages are the pedigree of nations. And I thought that was a really good quote. And we have to remember that Native American tribes are actually sovereign nations. So it really does tell you like how important it is to their culture and their sovereignty and their people. So now let's talk about who actually is 
leading the charge in keeping languages such as the Hoopa language alive. There's a couple different people that, that are taking the charge on this. The first is language clubs and programs like the summer camp we've referenced. The second one is governmental organizations and non-governmental organizations such as the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. And then the other question is, why the heck do we even need to preserve language? Well, there's quite a few. There's very deeply ingrained social and cultural reasons. A lot of these languages have been spoken for thousands of years and are very important to their tradition and their culture. And then also it's helpful for linguistics from a scientific linguistical point of view to understand the relationships and histories of the languages that they're studying. So finally, I want to take a moment to talk about why this particular subject and article really um, spoke to me and why it was important to me as an individual. Um, I'm going to CFC to become a social studies teacher, and this is an extremely informative topic towards my overall teaching philosophy as a teacher. Um, I am very strongly against ethnocentric teaching, which is when you um, judge another culture based on the values of your own culture. And I embrace a multicultural curriculum that exposes and teaches students of all culture to all cultures, especially their own. And I'm also a huge proponent of something called experiential learning, which is hands-on learning in the real world with real world consequences. And a great way to do that is summer camp and extended learning programs. And I believe this is a very effective way to teach children and um, a great attempt to revive the Hoopa language that I hope succeeds, obviously. And as a social studies teacher, I plan to teach historically accurate uh, information pertaining to the efforts of our government historically to suppress the rich language and culture of non-standard dialects, such as the Hoopa. And as we learned throughout this course, all language are logical, have a grammar structure, and can be used for official purposes. No language is superior to another, and I very much plan on taking this information with me and embarking that and parting that upon our uh, students in the high school level. I want to thank everybody for viewing my presentation. Um, my works cited are here. You can view the original article and um, any information that, that I referenced regarding language death and how that ha and how that process occurs. Um, I got it from our introduction to language textbook and you can find that information there. And then I just added a nice little picture of traditional hoop address and jewelry. Thanks so much.